Committee to Order. Um, if everyone could please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So thank you everyone for your patience. Um, and we're going to start with comments from the EAPC. So welcome, Tammy. Oops, sorry. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie. So um, good evening, everyone. I'm, I'm just going to be very quick. I just wanted to say a couple of things at this time of year. I know that our budget is in, so I wanted to thank um, everybody who has given so much time in preparing our school budget. Um, it is nice not to have to worry about next year. So that way we can continue all the good work that we do um, with our students. Uh, kudos to student council, um, our basketball team, the uh, upcoming Aristocat, uh, Cinderella for the high school, Service Olympus Middle School, Senior Night, and much, much more. We also, I'm one of them thankful for us to be able to do all of these things and having our voices heard. So behind the scenes, we have the Health and Safety Committee, um, we have the DEI Committee, we have um, the reading committee, so the, the curriculum work that's being done in the elementary school. Um, just a lot of appreciation out there for all of that work um, and hearing our, our voices, our teachers, and ESP's voices. So again, we appreciate all the hard work and the time that's spending making sure that our school district thrives. Thank you. Thanks, Tammy. Thank you, Tammy. Okay, and that brings us to um, comments from the general public. Um, Scott, do you want to read the you want me to be at the virtual nope. meeting? Nope, I'm fine. Okay. So um, just as a reminder, this meeting is also being held virtually in accordance with the Governor of Massachusetts March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Uh, the public can access this meeting on Zoom. Um, you can access the meeting in Town Hall in meeting room one or live on uh, Area 58. So we're happy about all those opportunities for the public to access our meetings. Uh, I also just want to take a moment to introduce Ashton McGuire. Uh, Ashton is here as part of our Student Advisory Council representative this evening. Uh, as we talked about at the beginning of the year, we have five members of our Student Advisory Council. Uh, we've been rotating through members, and Ashton is here representing the Student Advisory Council tonight. So we're proud and excited that Ashton is here with us. Excellent. Welcome, Ashton. So feel free to um, share your perspective in any of our discussions. Thank you for being here. Okay, so this brings us to comments from the general public. So we have quite a crowd. Um, if there's anyone that would um, like to make any type of statement, you're more than welcome to. You can just go right up to the table. Um, if there's anyone that's watching on Zoom that would like to participate in public comment, you are more than welcome. If you could please just put your name in the chat. That way we can recognize you. It is so quiet in here. You can hear a pin drop on the carpet. <laughs> And there is no one who's put their okay. name to the chat to participate in public comment. Okay, so we shall move on. Are we going to start with Captain's Council or Student Ambassadors? Oh, we're going to start with the Student Ambassadors. Okay. Great. Welcome. Thank you for being here. We always love it when we have Student Ambassadors come join us. So we're pleased to welcome Tyler Salavota and Cole Paquette as our, our Student Ambassadors from the elementary school. We'll give us some of the exciting things that have been happening at Calvary Elementary. Just give me one second, guys. You'll see the presentation come up. Ooh. Great. All right, you're on. Hi, I'm Tyler Salavota. And I'm Cole Pocat. We, we are student ambassadors from CES, and we want to share some of the great activities happening at our school. Have you ever heard of SSS? That stands for Safe and Supportive Schools. They are a group of administrators, teachers, and parents who work together to create events and make changes to improve our school. Hey Tyler, did you volunteer to help at the Glow Bowling Night? Yes, I did. I think the Glow Bowling Nights at CES are a blast. There were Glow Bowling Nights for kindergarten and another for first and second graders. It even turned into a dance party. I requested that Mr. Marsh play the duck song. I think everyone had a great time. It was the 100th day of school for the year, but for us in fifth grade, we had a thousand days of being at Carver Elementary School. We got to do fun 
activities. I remember in kindergarten we could bring a hundred of a certain item. I brought a hundred pennies. I brought a hundred corn cr- corn kernels. Us kids grow up so fast. <laughs> The whole school had an above-all be-kind assembly. Kids in different grades shared what they've been learning. Kindergartners sing a song where they counted to 100. It turned into a whole school sing-along. There, there was dancing, too. It was pretty cute. Two students <laughs> read a book called The Big Umbrella about kindness and including everybody. I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm not throwing away my shot. I was one of the patriots in the rap battle. Represented to third graders. I was a drummer. Drumming was a way to communicate commands and signals during battle. I volunteered at the pasta dinner and served food, cleaned after people ate, and set the tables. The third graders also performed songs on their recorders for their friends and families. Do you remember playing the recorder? I do. There was a lot of squeaking when we were first learning. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> Third graders were able to sit in a quieter space in the cafeteria for lunch. It has, it has been so successful, kids in other grades are going to have the option to sit in a quiet space with friends at lunch and color or read books. Sometimes you just need to chill out and relax. <laughs> Fifth graders are now growing crops without soil using hydroponic gardening. We are growing lettuce and basil for now. Some students asked about growing pumpkins and watermelons. Growing watermelons would be cool. I wish we could grow bananas. <laughs> Did you see the mystery room in the library? What's the crime? There are four suspects and the students are trying to find out who f- the students are trying to figure out who ripped pages out of a book. Students are listening to testimonies while looking at clues and evidence to determine who committed the crime. Don't, don't, don't. don't, don't. <laughs> Kids took pictures when Life Touch visited CES. Did you ever get pictures with a laser background? I did once. That's pretty cool. I saw a second grader in a full suit and tie. Very <laughs> professional. <laughs> Students and staff dressed up as like their favorite book characters on Friday. What was your what was the favorite costume you saw? I saw a kid in the cat in the hat onesie. Benzie dressed like the gingerbread man and Miss Ma- Mrs. Maestas was a baker. <laughs> wow, look at these handsome people. <laughs> They're totally not us. <laughs> Mrs. Maestas snapped a photo of us having a working lunch when we were when we were, where we worked on this presentation. How did we do? <laughs> Fantastic. So have, have, have cool. a great meeting and remember, above all, be kind. Awesome. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, Tyler and Tyler and Cole, you had a you had a challenge tonight. You had a big audience to present in front of. I know. Uh, so you. Both, you did a great job. Thank you very much for sharing everything, all the great things that happened at the elementary school. I didn't know we were growing hydroponic vegetables. That is awesome, right? A mystery room. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming and Thank sharing you. all of that with us. We love it. It was awesome. Great job. Thank you so much. My cheeks hurt from smiling. <laughs> right. That's a great thing. Always a good way to start a meeting. Absolutely. Okay, so do we have members of Captain's, Captain's Council? Council? I believe we have the Captain's Council, yeah. So I believe Carlos Thomas, Joe Tully, and Luke Blama. I don't know who's here to represent the Captain's Council. Oh, I see Luke. Uh, oh, thank you. Colin, Tyler, if you guys want to go, you can. You don't have to stay. If you want. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> good it's all right, Luke. We're yeah. tired, too. <laughs> 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 oh, you were at Kim? What are you doing? <laughs> we were texting him to come. How are you doing, Carlos? <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> I shall read off this list. Go for it. I'm sorry, I got a letter. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing here. All right. More community cultural agents. Thank you. 
All right, so I'm going to be honest, what am I doing here? <laughs> so, so guys, I, you were invited to just kind of give an update on your season and what happened in wrestling an and, and winter sports in general. Yeah. There's a larger winter sports presentation, but the captain's council, members of the captain's council are invited to each meeting, so maybe there was a miscommunication with you and Miss Wilson. No, uh, yeah, she, that was my vibe. Yeah, she, I, was the book. she was inviting you guys to just kind of give an update of what's happening. But we'd love to hear, since you're the wrestling captains, we'd love to hear what happened in the wrestling season. All right. And I know we have a larger sports presentation coming up later. So oh. sorry if there was a communication for you guys. Sorry, I apologize yeah. for that. A lot of great things happened this <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Joey here, hundred wins. Ooh, <laughs> um, so this wrestling season, we actually did really good this year. We don't have any 11th graders, but the 10th graders that show up every practice, our team is 90% 10th graders, and they're all doing great. So because we have three captains, we've been kind of helping them along all year. So me, Kyle, and Joey have the highest win rate amongst the team because we're the only three seniors, right? But next year and the year after should be seeing great improvement. And that includes the youth kids too. All three of us also stay after, help the youth kids practice, Great future looking ahead. I, That's awesome. Wonderful. Great future. <laughs> and he also got fifth place in um, New England. So that's pretty good. <laughs> so not only have we been helping with the youth program and build that up a little bit, we all worked on a haunted house over the over October. like around uh, during October, and we helped raise money for the athletics program at Carver and yep. donated I think somewhere around nine thousand dollars. Wow, um, amazing! So, with the wrestling program, we're working with the youth, and then watching the middle schoolers and even just the freshmen and, uh, and sophomores work throughout the year. A lot of them we start, we see start going to off season clubs and um, trying to improve and just enjoying being a part of the community, which is huge to see, especially when you have kids who've never been a part of a big sport or something like that before. Like we had a few kids go from even like I think Luke hadn't done a sport before wrestling, and then wow. he joins wrestling and he starts doing off season. He starts um, being a part of the community, and it's awesome to see kids who aren't usually being a part of the athletics join and, and love being a part of it. That's awesome. great. Thank, Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank you. Okay, so that takes us to the approval of minutes for the February 27th, 2023 meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the open session minutes from the February 27th, 2023 meeting. I will second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That brings us to communications. There are actually no, no new communications for tonight's meeting. Okay, so that brings us to reports from the superintendent. Just we, since our last meeting, which was only two weeks ago, we've just had a little bit of our personnel movement. Uh, so we've had two new hires. Uh, Hunter Schiedentoff is a custodian at the middle high school. Uh, he's the, gonna be the swing shift custodian. And Carol KT as an RBT post ESP at the middle high school. We've also had one resignation. Uh, Paula Murphy officially notified us of her intention to retire. Uh, her retirement will become effective in October of 2023. Okay. Thank you. And now what everyone is here for. <laughs> so we're excited to have a recognition of our winter all-stars and a kind of a winter sports recap and spring sports overview. And I believe that's gonna be led by our student members of our athletic student advisory council. And so that's Mackenzie Wall, Lily Ramsey, Molly O'Connor, and Sophia Tibbetts. And Ms. Vignes, I don't know if you're joining or not. You can obviously pull a couple of chairs up. I think they've got it all in control. All right. <laughs> so Welcome. first, thank you for having us today. I really appreciate it. Um, so what we're going to start off with is um i want to say just the highlights of the season if you could um <laughs> keep on going there's like a whole, yeah these are just photos of like some things that happen it is like two slides next one <laughs> okay all right so <laughs> there is a lot six of our seven uh winter teams qualified for the state tournament um 
which is really good. Um, our Division Three South South Sectional and State Champion um, wrestler. He also qualified for All State New England and the New England tournament and the national tournament. Joey Tully. Um, I also heard you watch it. <laughs> Also, I just heard he had his 100 wins, which is amazing. Um, also, um, recognition to Colson Tully. He placed third place in the state tournament uh, for wrestling. And then the for the boys' basketball team, they were the league champions, as well for the girls' and boys' track team. And on top of that, um, Cam, Cam Elaine, he, was, he went all the way to nationals. I want to say he got third. Um, and he, and third for, this past weekend, right, Cam? Yeah, um, for uh, uh, how to... oh, sorry, oh, nice one. <laughs> yeah, and I think Cam was second all state, right? And Joe was uh, first all state, he was all he was all state champion for wrestling. Amazing, oh, just so, not saying second place. Oh, sorry, sorry, just on second place, I'll say that. I apologize. <laughs> All right. So, over 160 students participated in the winter sport this season, and 60% of the varsity players were on honor roll um, or higher during the second semester. Um, however, 55% of all students, not just varsity, um, were on honor roll or higher for the second semester. Um, we just came in with a new winter cheer team, so they come to the like basketball games and they cheer for us. It's super fun. Um, and then we had three league MVPs: Cam Elaine, Joseph Tully, and Morgan Reed Davis. And we have eighteen league all stars, which we will name next. <laughs> and there is a lot. So um, I think after. I it's okay if I interject. I mm -hmm. think it'd be great if the All Stars could at least okay. stand to be recognized. Yeah. And maybe, maybe we'll do a picture with all the All Stars. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> I think maybe we should name all of them, and then they can all come up. Or sure, but if, if they could stand, when we yeah, recognize them, obviously. Yeah. So, uh, Tyler Lennox. Uh, Joshua Grimes. Charlie Condon. Ashley Johnson. Camelaine. Matt Buck. Darian King. Luke Holden. And there's more. <laughs> so, Sarah Langtree. Morgan Reed Davis. Paige Medico. Tara Baptiste. Troy and Clority. Joey Tully, Colson Tully, Carlos Thomas, and Luke Palmer. And and then maybe it makes sense just to the picture at the end once we're done with the full presentation. Yeah. Do a picture with all the do a picture with all the all stars. Yeah. So we have three league MVPs, like I said before, and that is Morgan Reed Davis, Camelaine, and Joey Tully. So um, here is everything that we already have done or are planning on doing in the Student Athletic Committee. So um, on top of our list is having a new uniform rotation. Um, so like every year or maybe like every other year, a new team will have like a new part of the uniform, a whole new uniform. Um, we already have new rugs in the gymnasium area. Um, so if you go in the high school lobby, they're all Crusader themed and it's really nice. Um, another big thing that we have planned is windscreens on the tennis courts and the 
um, fences of the stadium uh, and they gotta be crusader themed and so obviously they block wind but they also add more school spirit um one thing we've already done and planned um is changing the miaa carver grade requirement to play sports um we lowered 70 percent to i think 60 percent or 65 percent average um so no more players would be able to play sports that actually is just under review. Okay. And then we go to the superintendent and get to right. <laughs> okay. And, and, and then to okay. the handbook and the school committee for approval. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes. But, but, but it's so she's discussion. making her recommendation. Yeah, she's making her recommendation. <laughs> so keep it on great. So um, we also plan on fixing the baseball field, um, also adding fences, permanent fences for the softball and baseball fields. Um, obviously having more school spirit, like having the um, windbreakers and having photography, media days, interviews with coaches and players. Um, and also one thing we were recently talking about was having cords and special pins for how many years you play on a varsity sport team. Um, another thing, repairing the locker rooms. They're, they're not that pretty. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna clean them and hopefully we paint them and it's gonna be really nice. Um, also plan on having mats, mascots at games, the big foam ones, so to get people to want to go to the games more and stuff. Um, also, we want to have, uh, we plan on having new cameras for a film um, because um, I've, for multiple teams, we've had issues with filming, so getting new cameras might help. Um, obviously, um, I want to, people want to build the youth program so we won't have issues with building teams in the future. So, um, having more events with the youth with the youth teams and building those programs will be great and also we have a boys soccer team like confirmed we ha like miss mcginnis says he, we ha he has a team ready so that's really yes. exciting because i know for the few years they've had trouble um and lastly we're going to have an updated outdoor snack shack um so yeah that's very nice thank exciting. you right yeah. uh, very exciting so many amazing things happening <laughs> thank you for sharing yeah, thank you and thank you for all you guys are doing to you know work on compiling all these ideas and putting them into motion it's great to see um student involvement absolutely student voice is so important so thank you for advocating we appreciate hearing from you so it would be great if all of our all-stars were here if you could come forward and uh do a picture with the members of the school committee that'd be great so it's just how we invite all of our league all-stars to come forward But you guys get straight up here. Get right on in there. <laughs> Sure. Oh, it's going to work us. We're going to have you guys stay for a while, so just get ready Cameras don't smile. Now the room will clear. Right? Oh, fun. You guys stay. I know. We're going to talk about policies and interventions. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, for those watching on Zoom, if you can just bear with us for a minute while um, the room clears out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're just going to be a few minutes while the room empties. That healing walked by when I was like, oh, that's wow. Cool. Right? That was a lot of people. <laughs> big group of people. For, for joyous celebration. That doesn't happen very often. You know, when it's that made the crowd, it's, it's for not great things. So I'm very, I'm very thankful. So proud of all the things that our, our students are accomplishing. So great to see. Welcome. Do we have anyone in? We get a couple of people. I'm just going to look really quick. So I'm not sure is Mr. McGinnis we're gonna I think he's still gonna do a presentation. Yeah. Mr. McGinnis will be discussing spring sports in just a few minutes. I'm gonna download it and email it to you. Oh thank you. So many smiling faces. So oh, great. No worries. We're all just being grateful for all of the smiling faces and all of the yeah. success that we were just able to celebrate in person. I mean, it's just just great. Great things. Right, so I think we're ready to move on to our elementary literary curriculum update. Oh, wait, Sorry, wait, wait, Sean going to give us spring sports? Yeah, Sean going to do spring sports? His update? Oh, that, that was the whole, that was oh, that the whole athletic presentation. Okay, perfect. That was okay. the whole athletic presentation. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Luke gave it to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, I thought there was going to be like a discussion of all of the upcoming right. sports teams for <laughs> the spring season, but I guess not. <laughs> okay. Oh, so I will yes. say that a notification went out that the spring sports meeting has been postponed from tomorrow to Thursday. Yeah, so. we were going to talk about that in the yeah. upcoming events. Yes, that is okay, now. Okay. I figured it was a good spot to put it in. Yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, you all look so thrilled. Welcome to welcome. Community service. Right? We have some students that just joined us for civics. Yes. So enjoy. Yeah, so that that's been, that's been a nice thing we've learned. I think uh, some of our U.S. history students have learned that they can earn uh, credits for community service by coming to oh, public meetings. So excellent. we've got a group of students who've decided to attend uh, some of our school meetings, which I think is great. Yeah, it's great. Great to see student faces. And I'm I'm almost Absolutely. there. All right. So please welcome. Um, Dr. Erickson and Kate Moore, who are going to give us an update on uh, the uh, implementation of our updated literacy curriculum at the elementary school. Uh, we have a tough act to follow of, uh, of all our students. <laughs> We're excited. We have not made it to nationals. <laughs> <laughs> well, that clearly stated. <laughs> Well, thank you for being here. Uh, yes. So thank you very much for your attention. I agree that that is a tough act to follow, but we're excited um, to provide an update for you. I know last June when we came to you, we um, talked about the breadth and depth of what the Curriculum Council went through in terms of trying to decide um, our best approach to literacy moving forward. And then this year we have um, dove in and really begun our experiences. So I wanted to um, provide updates and I'm very fortunate that Kate Moore, our literacy coach is here to join me and to um, help share in the fun. So the big picture itinerary uh, of this um, presentation is I'm gonna do a brief introduction and talk about the major changes this year, starting first with changes in professional learning. And then Kate will talk about changes in classroom environment. I'll give a quick update in terms of books. And then um, we'll segue into student learning before taking any questions that the committee has. So by way of introduction, just a reminder that we have begun a multi-year phased in model 
Initially, we said that that would be three years to phase in. And just as a reminder of the work that the committee did in preparing for this experience and in making sure that all voices were heard and there was lots of opportunity for input, we took whole faculty feedback and longitudinal MCAS scores that revealed that our former program was less effective in reading and writing. And we wanted to make sure that we um, elevated student and teacher voice, both of which said that engagement was a concern. So through that, we developed our school-wide vision of literacy and generated that from whole faculty surveys and then engaged each grade level in defining what an ideal literacy classroom would be like, and then look to match the best program that would align with this vision of literacy and then go through our, our multi-year implementation plan. So I um, won't read this to you, but I'll pick out a few choice words in our literacy vision. And that is that we believe that all students can achieve success in literacy and become lifelong readers and learners through imagination, through building their knowledge, through engaging texts, through learning perseverance and curiosity and critical thinking in a developmentally appropriate manner. And we understand that foundational skills or a strong phonemic awareness and phonological base is essential in order to give students the skills they need to be solid readers as they move up their elementary experience and into active citizenship in our ever-changing world. So if you remember our little roadmap last year, we're on year one. So kindergarten through third grade has um, done an incredible amount of work in taking on units of study phonics and the revised reading units. And then grades four and five have worked on word study, which we recognized was in an area of concern. <clears throat> so changes in, changes in professional learning. So oftentimes when you go about selecting a new curriculum and you go through this committee experience and you vote and you um, procure all the materials, there tends to be a um, contract or a level of engagement that you have with the publisher where you agree to buy a certain amount of training and they come out and they show you how to unpack the books and take out the books and open the books. And then they say, good luck and have a great year. And we oftentimes don't see them again. And we recognized for this type of overhaul that it would be much more important to work with um, an entity that really gets to know our teachers and gets to know where we are as a school, where we're going as a school and to make sure that our professional learning is continuous but really is ongoing and job embedded and that aligns well with what we know about high quality professional development. So we've intentionally worked with this group so that they can chunk um, a specific focus each time that they come. Um, they work with small groups of teachers, oftentimes by grade levels, but sometimes beyond that, for example, they might work with all special educators or they may work with um, a particular group of teachers that have a specific focus. And then within that, there is definitely some knowledge transfer, but there's an opportunity for modeling and follow-up coaching so that teachers are able to see the practice in the classroom and ask questions and that there's a research base along with these best practices so that our teachers can grow in capacity and understand why it is that we're doing what we're doing. And then a lot of opportunity for question and answer tailored to each team's needs. And so each grade level has approached this with a little bit different flair. But the nice thing is that this ongoing relationship has allowed um, our consultant to meet the needs of each of those grade levels. I also just wanna pause for a second and say that for every day that we have the opportunity to have this consultant come in and talk to our teachers, our teachers go home and do work every every night. Anytime you take on a new curriculum, it feels like being a new teacher all over again. So you might understand the classroom management aspects of things, but oftentimes there is some new vernacular, some new skill um, involved with this. And I just want to credit our teachers for being amazing partners in this work. And um, as they've watched students grow, being able to champion those experiences and also reflect on their success. Because sometimes it's hard when you're back into a new 
curriculum to stop and say, wow, I'm actually doing this and it's working. Additionally, a huge component of our professional learning is seated to my right, mm -hmm. and that is Kate. So Kate um, is able to do one-on-one -on -one and small group coaching and working with grade level teams. Each teacher is given the opportunity to receive that individualized support and will continue to throughout this process. In addition to modeling, co-planning, um, having data-driven experiences, and it's a nice relationship because they're able to in a lot of cases self-select what they need through conversations with Kate or with the grade level or administration. And so the idea is we're really touting the importance of small group differentiation in the classroom, but that definitely can be extrapolated out to professional learning, making sure that we're giving small groups of teachers what they need. So now I'm going to turn the time over to Kate, who can talk about how our classrooms look and feel different than they have in the past. Um, I just want to start by thanking the committee and Scott, Meredith, Ron, Naomi, she's still here, and Jess and Ruby and all of the teachers for their hard work. This has been a heavy lift, um, but we're seeing some wonderful things in the classroom. So thank you all for um, your dedication and support. So we have um, implemented a separate phonics program that's 30 minutes in length. And this is based on all the new neuroscience that's happened over the past couple of years um, and the science of reading research. So you can see the concepts that we're teaching. These are non-sequential. They happen throughout the year. So um, in K and 1, the concepts are spiraled, but then there is the progression into second grade. Um, these are taught through a multi-sensory approach to teaching, very hands-on um, and very systematic and explicit. Oh, there it is. Um, so what does it look like in the classroom? So the phonics lesson is every day for 30 minutes and it starts off with a mini lesson where the teacher has the students on the carpet and um, teaches the concept or skill he or she might be using um, mentor texts or decodable books, songs and poems to really engage students. And then the students on the carpet have um, rug clubs so the teacher has selected students to work together it's very intentional in how she pairs the students together and they're working through those concepts um, with games and manipulatives it's really fun for the students and then the last five minutes of that 30 minutes is a share so students share out their discoveries um, so if I can just add to the design of it is meant to not only be highly engaging, but it's fun for me. Fun might not be the appropriate word. It's awesome for me to walk into these classrooms and um, each grade level in K through two has a grade level mascot, but we have one for each classroom. And um, for example, in one classroom that I was in, the grade level mascot was fast asleep. And the teacher explained that um, that the tiger had been up a lion. Had, <laughs> sorry, but right. We're going to adopt a new biology curriculum later. No. Uh, but, sorry. The lion had been asleep all night because, um, or it was asleep in front of the classroom because he had been up all night looking for silent E. And he didn't know if the rule that had been taught the day before was accurate. And so students had to like compel this lion by going around the room and finding these silent E's. And like engagement was off the chart. It was almost a situation where you lost track of time because the students were so engaged so it's awesome no oh, that's great i did not i have pictures of the mascots but i didn't include them here um, this is an example of partner reading so in the reading workshop which is separate from the phonics workshop and i'll speak to the reading workshop in a moment students are again strategically partnered um, and so when they are doing their independent reading they're working for 10 to 15 minutes with another student and they can be doing partner reading where they have either two separate books but the idea is for them to talk about the concepts that were taught in the mini lesson and then um, the next slide shows partner reading where they have a shared text. So they're looking through the book together and reading the book together and then talking about the <clears throat> concepts and discussing the concepts that were taught in their mini lesson. This is a quote from one of our first grade teachers. So I'll give you a minute to read that. I won't read it to you. <coughs> 
I think the idea that students have ownership and real investment in their reading, um, and they're really, really excited about becoming readers, and they feel like readers is powerful. <laughs> So then in addition to the phonics units of study that we've adopted, we've also adopted the units of study in reading. And um, this is about 40 to 60 minutes separate from the phonics, but phonics is integrated and phonemic awareness is integrated into the reading workshop. And teachers are using decodable text as well as mentor text. They're building background knowledge, um, vocabulary, they're teaching um, book handling skills and comprehension skills in this time. And what I have found is most remarkable is the community of readers that has been built from the beginning. And students really do have voice and choice um, in what they're reading. And so that has expanded upon our um, social emotional learning too in the classrooms. So what does readers workshop look like? It's a very familiar routine, very similar to the phonics workshop. Um, it starts off with the mini lesson where teachers are using mentor texts and poems and songs, just as I had mentioned, to engage students and then to teach the concept. And then students break off and they go into either their partner reading or their independent reading. And this is when teachers are circulating the room and conferring either with small groups or with individual students. Um, and then also working with small groups of students based on students' needs. And at the end, there's a share. So they're bringing the community of readers back to the carpet and discussing um, things that they've discovered in their independent reading. This is an, an example of small group differentiation. It's usually about two to five students. And that's okay. I can I talk faster. <laughs> um, so in, in small groups, um, it's really based on what the students need. So it's really precise teaching. Um, okay. Uh, here's a quote from a third grade teacher who, so we've adopted units of study reading K to three and then units of study phonics K to two. And then we have not left out um, grades four and five. So we adopted a word study program called Morpheme Magic, and it's 53 lessons across grades four and five, but within each of those lessons, there are several activities. So a lesson could last two, three, or four days. Um, and I've worked with fourth and fifth grade to create a sequence and a pacing guide so that the concepts are spirals throughout fourth and fifth grade. So in fourth grade, students um, are working on suffixes, prefixes, roots, and Greek combining forms. And they're also revisiting those um, in fifth grade. And then just a little bit more about morphine magic. So morphine magic and word study at this level allows students to understand that words have different parts. And within those different parts, the words have um, different meanings, or those parts have different meanings. So this builds vocabulary, um, vocabulary no knowledge that then can be applied across content areas. So one of the um, biggest changes this year is we wanted to make sure that we invested in lots of different books. And even though we have our book collection, we wanted to make sure that we were purchasing sets between six and 12 books so that students could have a lot of variety in the classroom and that there was an opportunity to make sure that they were reading somewhere within their zone of proximal development or in their roughly right area, because we know that's the sweet spot where there is the greatest amount of growth. So um, Ruby and Naomi and Jess um, spent a lot of time <laughs> over the weekends with me or on um, three-day weekends unpacking books, shelving books. The reading team helped with this huge initial order that we got. And um, that would include Kate and the reading specialists and reading ESPs. So right now we have a K through two book room downstairs and a grade three through five book room upstairs. Teachers know that if 
students are reading above or below grade level that they can access accordingly. So everyone is allowed to use those. We've added more than 1,500 titles to searchable book rooms. And then we also have purchased something called Jump Rope Readers, which is an additional 520 titles. And those are decodables for younger readers so that there is predictable text as they grow in their skill and in their confidence. In total, if you hit the next arrow key, Mr. Neef, thank you. We have um, more than 20,000 new books. So it's been wonderful. Our teachers are using them. We have more to buy in the future, but it's a really nice infusion at the beginning to be able to make sure that we have the resources so that students are reading authentic text. Um, so we have a quote from the kindergarten team and kindergarten has seen um, significant growth in their students from the beginning of the year. Um, so just by getting students excited about learning, they're really retaining the skills, they're applying those skills in their reading and writing. And then we also have heard from parents, I think it's on the next quote, um, who are reporting that their students their children are coming home and feeling like readers and saying they're readers and they're very, very excited. So, and then this is, I just think so. No. So um, this is my favorite part of the presentation. This is a student, a kindergarten student who came in um, knowing some letter. This is what, sorry, my fault. When we embed a video, sometimes it's hard to get it. But... Well, in the Zoom and uh, oh, okay. to do all the technology oh, with embedded videos is not something that's been really successful with. But I'll try. We'll see what happens. The student. Obviously, we want to hear from the student. Yeah. But what, what happens is I have to turn my volume up, which is going to give us some feedback. Yeah. This is a typical yeah. Yeah. That's just amazing. So this is the, the typical growth that we're seeing kids come come in with some letters and sounds and then becoming readers by this time in the, the year in kindergarten. So wonderful to see. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I love technology, technology. is not on our side tonight. Um, I, don't, I don't know why we've always just, why we've struggled with embedded video. It's been a problem. <coughs> Zoom presentations. All right, anyway. So I'll just explain a little bit about this slide. Um, in K to two, students are learning snap words. So those are words they have to learn, they have to know in a snap. 
and they are words that they can't decode, so they don't follow any specific pattern. So we have lots of different activities that they do to learn their snap words. And this was one example, they made snap word crowns. So very multi-modality learning. This also is an example of vowel shields that they use in kindergarten. So they have these in their book boxes and they use the vowel shields when they're learning um, phonics skills or they're doing their reading or writing. So it's just a nice scaffolded support that they have. I think they're doing a word sort here. <laughs> And then this is really fun too. These are word builders. So these students are using um, letter tiles and pictures to uh, make words. And if you can see the little girl in the back has a construction hat on. So she's building words. So it's really <laughs> engaging for students. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. So all of these, um, bring us back to our school-wide vision of literacy, which again is kind of that, um, that key component that we're trying to meet through all of the choices that we're making instructionally and in support of um, teachers' professional development. So before we launch into questions, I just want, in the spirit of transparency, to let you know that we've highlighted the amazing growth that kindergarten has had, but we recognize that our first graders last year did not have this experience, and more importantly, that our second graders this year um, didn't have two years of these experiences. And if you remember, those were the students that came into kindergarten during their hybrid year and last year were masked. So um, just a shout out to both of those grade levels who, in addition to launching this program, are trying to work really hard on filling in those gaps. And in talking with other assistant superintendents and other folks in the literacy world, this trend around second grade and and having opportunity gaps caused by COVID is not just a Carver pro um, problem. It's existing throughout the Commonwealth and throughout the nation. And folks are really putting their heads together to try to figure out how to support students. And a lot of it has to do with what's happening in the classroom and then additional support that um, we're able to provide. So I just wanted to share that with you because we talked last year about unfinished learning and the fact that it's going to take several years to kind of dig our ourselves out of that experience. So the promising piece is knowing that kindergarten, who's coming in and accessing this for the first time, the fact that they're reading so much further than they have before shows that as this gets scaled up over the next couple of years, that we'll see that continual growth, which is great. But I just want to be really honest about the challenges that face us in some of those COVID-induced situations. So with that said, I just want to thank you for your ongoing support and for the communities and families that are helping build readers at home and respond to the zest and the excitement that their young learners are coming home with and then to our staff administration and Kate so any questions just a quick question um so I have a little who's in third grade and she uh goes to the other classrooms and reads to is that part of this whole literacy movement like she's so uh, that she goes down to like first grade or so that would be something that the classroom teacher has set uh, up with other classrooms. Okay, with other classrooms. Okay. In every Because she loves it. And, and we, our neighbor is also in the class that she's been going oh, down and reading oh, to. So they've been having a great time. Yeah. And she absolutely loves it. She comes home and talks about it all the time. So oh, whoever's doing that, I think it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone have any questions? Okay, well, I'm going to say round of applause for 20,000 plus books. Yeah. And everyone talk. Thank you so much for coming and for sharing all of this with us. Um, and I, fantastic. right? Yeah. I mean, it's so, awesome. it's really so amazing and so important that we hear, but that other people in the community know all the great things that are happening. Um, and really, truly, I'm so grateful for our teachers, our staff, our administrators, and how hard everyone works to help our students be successful. So um, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So our next item is just the uh, review of our upcoming events. So yes. I will, as you, as usual, I will not necessarily read everything that's on here, but I'll 
give a second to display for those in the audience to see the events that are coming up. As we did highlight, uh, Spring Sports Parent Athletes Night was supposed to be tomorrow night, but we changed it because of the uh, the third of a storm. Uh, so that will now be mm-hmm. Thursday night at 6.15. Um, <clears throat> we do have, uh, I think, as Tammy mentioned earlier, we have our um, elementary uh, drama production of Aristocrats coming up uh, this weekend, uh, well, Thursday and Friday, the 16th and 17th. We have the high school drama presentation of Cinderella on the 24th and the 25th. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot. You look at this list, there's a lot of things happening over the next uh, two months. Um, when you look down, it's April. April is also action packed and filled with all kinds of events. It's amazing. I really hope that um, families and community members come support our students, come see the shows. And, uh, one, yeah. one thing I would highlight from the uh, April list is we are having a return of the senior show. Uh, so we haven't we haven't had a senior show since uh, prior to oh, COVID. Awesome. Um, so it'll be the first time in three years that we've had a senior show. Uh, so that's uh, well, actually, yeah, three years since so 2019. Uh, so that is coming up on April 25th at six o'clock. And I see something else very exciting on the 26th. Met showcase. Um, the Met showcase. Uh, oh, yay. But so, Meredith, uh, since I mentioned, I don't know if you want to touch base, just give a quick update on you, the Met Showcase. Mind, but Meredith? it's, a, it's a little bit, the format's a little bit different this year than okay. we did it last year. So, Meredith can touch on that. And we'll probably end up doing a presentation about that afterwards. Yeah, afterwards. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. So, now in our second year of our manufacturing engineering technology innovation pathway, um, our advisory committee wanted to set the goal to have another student showcase, but this time make it more narrowly tailored towards having 11th graders secure really purposeful and meaningful internship placements for their senior internships. So that obviously takes a different level of courting, for lack of a better term, than um, what we did last year when we were really just intent on getting the word out. And we're using the same catchment area, so that triangle between Quincy, the Bridges, in New Bedford to try to attract manufacturers or a potential placement, but to be really explicit in terms of what skills our students have developed. So if you remember last year, we had um, a couple folks come in kind of bowled away by what our students were able to do. There was someone there from four C's that said, you know, this is what juniors in college are doing. And those are great things to highlight. But we also recognize, especially for a new placement, when someone takes on an internship, that's a commitment that that placement is making to not only help develop the skills of a student, but to also have a level of um I guess, dependability from the student that they're showing up on time and that it's not a heavy lift for that partnership. So the that's the intention of the showcase. We're still going to have some underclassmen there. We're still going to have the opportunity for folks to walk around and see students engaged in their project. But you'll notice um, starting next week, we're going to put out some very kind of specific um, marketing on LinkedIn, and it's going to be with that particular target, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry to put you on the spot. No, it's great. And I <laughs> think yeah. we'll talk about it later, but there's yep. been a huge effort on behalf of our lead industry partner and Mass Hire South Shore oh, and some great. folks to help us again. Yeah. So yeah. great. Because also that... It, that is a little bit of a daunting challenge, the fact that we have so many seniors next year who are going to be looking for internships mm-hmm. in the field, in the industry. And that's a requirement of the innovation pathway yep. is yep. that they have to do an internship uh, in an ind- industry specific to their to their pathway. So uh, we're excited about getting everybody placed and hoping the Met Showcase is going to help along the way. Awesome. Can I ask a quick question? Um, not on the tech that <laughs> on the open events. That's all great. Thank you. I'm very excited for that. Um, on April, um, sorry, March 30th, it says that there's a family fun night at Cover Middle High School. Is there any details on what that is? Because I haven't heard about that. Yeah. So family fun night is a repeat of the event that we did last year from our district wide SEL team. Okay. Uh, so there's good. We did a dinner last year. So last year we did dinner and then a couple of different. Uh, present shows from the elementary school musical right. and the high school music yeah. groups. Yeah, uh, and then we did bingo. Right. Uh, this year we've eliminated the dinner piece of it because uh, our dinner actually had a smaller turnout than the rest of the event. Um, so we're going to be doing um, 
some musical numbers from both the high school symphonic band is performing, um, the elementary chorus. Uh, they're going to do, I think they're going to do two numbers from Aristocrats. Uh, and then we're going to do bingo afterwards. We're going to keep the bingo piece. Uh, I was just calling it a family fun night. There should be a flyer going out about that. Um, definitely by the end of this week okay. uh, to the entire community, inviting them to participate. Uh, I know last year, because we did the dinner, uh, it created a little bit of a uh, little bit of angst for some people because it sold out very quickly. Um, so since we're not doing the dinner and we're not going to be feeding people, we feel like we can have a more general open invitation. Uh, so that was another that was another decision to not do the dinner portion of it. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit a little bit of a repeat of what we did last year, and that is going to be on Thursday, the thirtieth, starting at six o'clock. Awesome, thank you. Awesome. That's great. That was a lot of fun last year. So it was. And we won skies on tickets with t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, we actually have a lot of great we have a lot of great prizes uh, for the raffle for the bingo that night. That's awesome. Awesome. Okay, that brings us to see recommendations from the superintendent. All right, first up is uh, Capital Outlet. So last Monday, Ron and I presented to the fine, a combination of the Finance and the Capital Outlet Committees. Um, and obviously, Jen, being a member of the Capital Outlet Committee, she can add in here or add any details I'm missing or correct anything that I miss here. Uh, but at the learning at the meeting, we've learned the town has decided to, uh, through town meeting, attempt to bond a couple items uh, that were originally capital requests on the town side. Uh, specifically the HVAC at the library and the siding at town hall. I think it might also include the roof, roof of the library. Yeah. And the roof uh, of the town hall. And the roof of the town hall. So by having those, by asking the town at town meeting, and it would have to be approved the town meeting through a warrant uh, to bond those items, that's actually going to free up some money in capital. And it's going to give the opportunity for us, if you remember our last meeting, we actually revi- we voted a revised capital request. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now we might have the opportunities to have our capital list come back. Uh, and then, but there's, there's one other piece to it as well. So I'll show the overview here. So the, there's a really good idea of town at town meeting, and these, these are gonna have to happen in order. So on the warrant, my understanding is that the, the bond issue will be first. Uh, and if the town approves the bond, then we'll present a capital list that actually includes all of our major items. The school and the list is up here on the screen. Uh, the school technology infrastructure equipment for 273,000, the buses, uh, uh, the minivan, the middle high school classroom modernization in terms of redoing uh, spaces and furnitures at the middle high school, uh, repaving the middle, well, not repaving, fixing, repairing uh, the middle high school parking lot. Uh, the Carver Elementary School curriculum equipment update, which also includes uh, more books. I into a two thousand dollar book, uh, two thousand book library, um, and then the the design for the Pond Street field, uh, and then the concession stand, um, and the tech items. We had a lot of pieces in terms of the second half of the laptops for the elementary school. Uh, and then also the touch screens at the middle high school completing that project. So if the bond gets passed, then Capital Outlay will be able to go forward and support all of our capital requests. Wow. Uh, so that that's exciting. Um, if the bond is not passed, uh, then it would fall back to the I, the list that you approved Voted. on February 3rd. Mm-hmm. But now there's also one more contingency here um, is there are some outstanding capital items from across the town, some are school, some are town, uh, that have not been completely spent out. There may have been capital items that were passed in 2019, 2020, 2021. Some going all the way back to 2016. So we're looking to sweep some of those items. Mm-hmm. And and we at, we discussed this when we presented at the meeting. They asked us which items were still open, which we still intended on funding, and which ones we could sweep. We had a few items that we could sweep. Uh, we had a few items that we said no. Like, so, for example, I don't remember the exact number that we're sweeping. And, like, one of our open items was one of the buses. Bus, yeah. yeah, so we yeah, so we, we bought a bus. And then, but then we also, one that we weren't sweeping was the buses that we've ordered that haven't come in yet. Yeah, so there's some open items that we have that we just haven't been able to purchase. So the, ta- the whole town's doing that. And the items that they're going to sweep, they're adding into the capital plan. So the worst-case scenario is that the bond doesn't pass the town all those items that are swept the town has to also vote to reallocate that money 
Yeah, so essentially what happens is we have to, at town meeting, we have to say, like, the warrant's going to be posed as, you know, would town meeting please approve closing out these old capital items that are either un, either projects came in under budget, less than what was approved, or they ended up not doing it for whatever reason, and reallocating that money to be used for this year's capital. Mm -hmm. Town meeting has to vote that because town meeting voted for this money to be used for a certain reason, yeah. so we can't just can't take it and use it. Um, if town meeting was to reject that, that money would go into free cash at the end of the fiscal year, which would then go into next year's capital. Um, so it's very unlikely the town meeting wouldn't vote to allow us to use it for this year's capital because it's really a question of this year versus next year. Um, but on this schedule, that first column is assuming that the bonds pass and the transfers get approved. Mm -hmm. The second columns, if the town votes to not bond, they don't want to loan out but they'll approve the transfers. And then that third is if they say, no, we're not doing a loan and we don't want you to use old unexpended mm -hmm. capital items for this year's capital. Um, and if that happens, then we're back into that original deficit that we were in. And it's even with the original concessions we made, it's still in a real pinch. So we're having to plug a little bit to townwide technology to get it to balance. And to drop the schematic design of and the, to drop the schematic middle design. high school, uh, the concession stand. Oh. So uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's out, my my sense is that's an unlikely scenario. Um, yeah. And the capital Lake committee actually brought this back to us, this third option. Um, so we're bringing that back to the committee to say, would you approve that option in terms of if the worst case scenario that we would lose eighty five thousand from the townwide tech? Uh, honestly, we haven't had a discussion of which items we would pull. Um, so yeah, I can't make a I time. can't make a formal presentation to tonight. Which of the what where would we cut the eighty five thousand from the two seventy three? Right, because then uh, townwide tech is also PCs for town hall and also for a server replacement. There's also an old capital item um, that has unexpended money that was not being swept, and so capital outlays is meeting again on Thursday, and they're intending to invite. Um, Dave Seaton Tough and Stephen Mahoney, who's in charge of the townwide IT, mm -hmm. um, to ask what's in that 127 if that can be swept or if that's something that could be used to offset this, mm -hmm. um, you know, or if that's just, you know, purchase orders that haven't come in yet. Yeah. So it's planned to be spent because we just don't know. But um, yeah, you know, if town doesn't approve the transfer of those old capital items, then the capital budget is really slim and all departments are taking hits on requests. Mm -hmm. I mean, the and, fire has a vehicle they're not going to get. Police are losing two vehicles. Like it's everybody's getting hit with their share. And, and ultimately, um, the way this is laying out, we're not going to know the answers to these questions until, until town meeting. Until town meeting, because yep. the, it all depends what the town votes on those first two warrant items in terms of mm -hmm. sweeping the capital items. And so the message there is to go to town meeting and vote. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> April 11th, Carbondale High School. Right. We also don't know what's going to happen with the bonding issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess for tonight, uh, moving forward just to prepare us for town meeting. We're looking for the school committee to support, in essence, these three okay. ranges of options that could happen. Um, just because ultimately uh, the capital requests that go before the town are always approved by the school committee. Mm -hmm. uh, and this year is a little different because we're not exactly sure what those, well, we know what the requests are going to be. We don't know what funding is going to be available until we get to the meeting. Yeah, the unusual piece is that usually we know what money we have available to spend for capital. But right. this year, it's very contingent on if this happens and if this happens and then this. <laughs> so it's multi-layered, super fun. <laughs> so I don't know if anybody has any questions for Jen or I or Ron on this well, item. Well, thank you for bringing all three options and for the explanation. I think I think everyone has a good understanding. Like you said, we need people to come to town meeting on April 11th and vote. So would someone like to make a motion to approve? I guess all three. Yeah, approve, right? yeah. This, approve this all schedule. three options as presented. I'm on the subcommittee, so I feel like someone. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I move to approve um, all three as presented, all three capital plan as presented. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Again, thank you. I know capital outlay is sure. um, a lot of hours. Um, I appreciate many yeah, many, 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 many hours. I appreciate it. And I know that Scott and Ron have spent many, many hours as well. Yes. So thank you to everyone who's advocating on behalf of Harvard students. Thank you you are that. appreciated. So thank you for that. No so it's a lot of work. And I 
It's very much appreciated. Yeah, so our final meeting will be this Thursday where we'll vote the total capital plan to go onto the warrant. Great. Right? Very exciting. Okay, uh, moving into our policy work, which we've been doing a lot of. Um, so today we have the second reading of policies for sections G and H. Um, we did a first reading at the last meeting. Um, at that time, there were no suggestions for changes for sections G and H. Uh, H is a very small section with very minimal changes. Uh, G had a few changes, and we actually uh, eliminated some policies that, or recommending that we eliminate some policies that we haven't had before. Uh, so I will talk about a little bit, I'll just highlight the G changes again. Okay. Um, and then I have a, a little bit of a recommendation on the uh, the motion, uh, the proposed motion I gave in your background, just because uh, we still have that kind of one outstanding policy right. that Rebecca needs to review uh, in terms of educated ethics. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so we deleted policy GA, personal policy goals. Um, we deleted the recommendation is to delete policy GBD, school committee staff communications. And the reason for that was it was actually uh, the same as a policy that we already have in another form. It's in section B. So I say it's policy VHC. Uh, we're going to hold on policy GBEBBA E. Hey, that's <laughs> Educator Ethics Protocol, Protect Yourself, Healthy Boundaries of Educators. Uh, Rebecca is still working on updating that one. So when we make our motion tonight, my recommendation would be to approve uh, sections G and H in form, except for policy G, B, E, B, B, A, dash E, which someone's going to say that. So someone's going to say that. I will follow on that side. I appreciate that because I can't speak to me. And yeah. Uh, again, highlighting policy GBEBD, online fundraisers and solicitations and crowdfunding. Uh, this is a policy we don't have, uh, but we're really interested in enacting. Uh, it establishes that all online fundraisers must be approved by the superintendent. It also governs how staff can and use online uh, fundraising sites uh, such as Donors Choose and GoFundMe. Uh, this is actually an area that I think we need to clean up and tighten up a little bit in the district. Uh, and we think this policy was going to help us, is going to help us to do that. Um, policy GBEC, Drug Free Workplace. Uh, we did not have this policy, but we'd like to add the mass version. Um, policy GBGE, Domestic Violence Leave Act. Uh, we didn't have this policy. We're actually uh, required to by law. Because uh, we are, it's a, I believe it was a lot. I don't want to quote the date when it was enacted, 2019, 2020, recently, within the last couple of years. Uh, we did not have a policy to match that law, so we're actually kind of required to have that. Um, policy GBGF, family medical leave. Uh, we actually decided to adopt the MASC policy, which is much shorter than ours. Our old policy here was really the procedures and protocols for the implementation of the Family Medical Leave Act, which actually changed. Uh, based on recommendations from the federal government. Um, so basically the new MASC policy is just states that we will follow the Family Medical Leave Act and all the procedures and policies around it. Um, <clears throat> and we added a policy that we did not have about employment of principals, policy GCBB. Uh, so those are the major changes or additions. Uh, like I said, it was actually, in this section, it was more us adding things that we didn't have uh, with, a, with a few small deletions. Um, so I don't know if uh, Stephanie or Jen, as the members of the policy subcommittee, have any additional items they'd like to discuss. If not, I'd turn it. I'd recommend that we make a motion to approve uh, sections G and H in form, except for uh, the educator ethics protocols policy. I think that covers it. You ready? Uh, seeing no comments, I will move to approve sections G and H of the policy manual in form with the exception of policy G, B, E, B, B, A, E, Educator Ethics Protocol, as presented this evening. I will second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Moving on to the first reading of policy section I. Our next two sections, I and J, are actually the largest in the policy manual. Uh, so there was, uh, you know, the 70s holding, holding up, it was, up. I think it was over 120, <laughs> it's over, this policy section I itself, I think is over 110 pages. Um, took us two meetings to get yeah, 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 it took us a while to get through this one. Um, so we're actually, this meeting we're doing just I, the next meeting we'll bring just J. Uh, and then after that, there's only two two sections left. 
Uh, so we're getting, we're getting close. We're moving close to we're moving close to the end. And for what it's worth, we are planning to meet and review K and L. However, when K and L come for the first reading, I'll no longer be on the committee. So I'm going to have to leave it to my fellow committee members to ensure that all of my time and effort does not go to waste when you guys vote these in. <laughs> so um, again, that section I is a large section. Uh, I'll outline some key changes here. Uh, um, and so if you bear with me, I'll go through it pretty quickly. Uh, policy IA instructional goals uh, and policy IAH basic instructional programs um, were bo both actually considered to be outdated. Uh, and there were policies that we just had that were not policies from MASC. And we actually were proposing that we would eliminate them. Um, the same is uh, with policy IHAE physical education. Uh, it was outdated, but it was also covered in other policies in Section I, the key points of it. Um, so we're recommending and proposing that that be eliminated. Um, <clears throat> the next three policies, policy IHB, special education instructional programs and accommodations, policy IHBA, programs of studies for students with disabilities, and policy IHBAA, observations of special education programs. These are all, all MASC recommended policies that we actually don't currently have. Uh, they're all related to our special education programs. Um, all things that we do, very consistent with our procedures and how we operate as a school district. Uh, so we thought it was actually important to uh, add these policies around special education. So that's our recommendation. Um, the next area is we did definitely had outdated policies for our EL learners. Uh, so policy IHBE, which was called bilingual education, uh, not even a term that's used anymore, and policy IHBEA, English as a second language, also a term that's no longer used anymore, uh, are outdated, and the proposal is that they be eliminated. And then we're going to add policy IHBEA, which is actually a rename of our policy, which is called English Learners Education. Uh, it is the MASC recommendation, uh, and it is the most current in terms of our roles and responsibilities of district uh, for English language learners. So we're deleting two outdated policies around EL students and adding a current policy. Um, policy IJNDC, Internet Publications. Um, this is actually a currently a recommended MASC policy that we do not have, that we're proposing that we add. Uh, the policy covers guidelines in regards to supervision and oversight of web pages uh, managed by the district, district uh, including content and safety precautions and regulations we should have in around our web pages. Policy IJOA, field trips and excursions. Uh, we wanted to point out this is our policy, and we're actually maintaining our policy and not taking the MASC recommendation. But we did want to add one piece what we felt was missing. Uh, we're going to add a line that says all co-ed overnight trips will be required to have co-ed chaperones. Because uh, currently not, that's not our policy. Mm -hmm. And there have been some situations where we've had a group of students go overnight someplace with uh, only one chaperone. Uh, so we really feel like it, that really shouldn't happen. There should be multiple chaperones. And if it's a co-ed field trip, there should be co-ed chaperones. Um, policy ILD, um, student submissions to educational surveys and research. Uh, this is also a policy we don't have, but it's rented by, rented by MASC. I would like to add it. It requires parental consent of a student who's going to be involved in a survey that's paid for by federal funds or involved in any kind of educational research by an outside group supported by federal funds. That doesn't really happen a lot. Uh, but I can't say it's never happened. Uh, we have had some re we've had some groups from outside organizations come in and, and ask to do some research uh, or to interview students or talk to students or survey students. Uh, and this policy would just basically state that if that's ever going to happen, that it has to be uh, an active consent of parents, not a passive consent. Active consent meaning we have to reach out to parents, notify them, and say, hey, this group's coming in. They'd like to do this. They'd like your student to be involved, and we want your written signed permission to do that. Um, where sometimes it's a passive consent where it's, okay, we send it out and say, this is happening, and if you don't want your student to participate, let us know. Uh, so it's an opt-out. So this this saying this for that type of thing, it can't be an opt-out. It's required to be uh, an active consent, and all parents are required to be notified, which certainly makes sense uh, that we would do that if we were bringing any kind of program like that. And I'm fairly certain on this one that Jim said that this is actually law and it's a required policy. Yes, yeah. Um, and then the last one, policy IMG, animals in school. I noticed Ruby left. 
Uh, could be like that one. Animal, <laughs> guy, animal in school. Uh, Anne O'Malley at the middle high school. Uh, so our current policy actually deals only specifically with service animals. Uh, this policy is more updated and deals with service animals uh, like O'Malley or like Benzie. Um, our current do- our current therapy dogs in both buildings, uh, but also deals with other types of animals that someone might bring into school for generally science classes. Quite honestly, you know, in some of our science classes, we have live animals, uh, and it just establishes some guidelines and regulations about uh, what type of, of animals are safe to bring in and uh, be in in a school setting. Um, so we recommend that we adopt this policy, which was actually is actually the MAS, MASC update of policy IMG, uh, <clears throat> which they entitle animals in school. Uh, I think I hit the big ones, but again, Jen and uh, Stephanie, if you want to add anything from that you remember from section I. There was a, there was a lot there was a lot to cover. A lot of good discussion. A lot of good questions. <laughs> There was a lot of information gathering. It was it was good to this understand. Is, this has been a good process for us to go for us to go through. Obviously, our policy manual is outdated. You know, with many of our policies referencing back to two thousand and one and two thousand or two thousand and two, uh, and you know, I think there's been some real uh, thoughtful discussions by the subcommittee, looking at what we currently do, our current practice, and align that with our policies that exist uh, in the policy manual. Um, I'll say one thing that came up at during section I, which um, I feel is good for all of us to know, is that one of the items in section I that we're putting in, it was actually had to do with um, graduation requirements. And I think, I don't remember who was in the committee when we voted that last year, um, but essentially we updated our handbook for graduation requirements and we put it into practice and then realized we didn't update the policy. So the policy came last, but really it should go reverse where the policy should have gotten updated first. And then, so one of the things that Jim mentioned, which I think is just good for all of us mm-hmm. as committee members to know is that whenever, um, you know, and annually the, the administration tends to look at the handbooks and bring handbook changes to us that we should all be, uh, on the forefront of our minds saying, you know, does mm-hmm. any of these handbook changes affect any of our existing policies? Yeah. And do we then need to make a policy update in order to adopt this? Um, and, and that way it'll prevent that from happening. So I just, I won't be here when the next handbook change is coming. So for the rest of you, <laughs> that is a good thing when they're bringing handbook changes. So it is gonna, but the good thing I will say going through all of these policy updates is that for some of them where ours were outdated and mask had an updated version, I would say 99% of the cases, you know, we'd read them and we'd go, oh, we're actually compliant with the updated version. So the good news is, is that our practices have been being updated with what the policy should be. The policies just haven't been keeping up with the practices because they hadn't been looked at in so long. Uh, but that's been the good thing. It wasn't like we saw a tiny spot and, you know, Scott's over there fervently making a list of all the things he needs to start doing. It's like, oh, yeah, that's what we do. Oh, yeah, that's what we do. Oh, yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. So that's been the good thing. And I, so I will say, like, even though the policies weren't <laughs> up to date, uh, our practices have been. Yeah, and one, of, one of the things we're going to have to consider or think about is... Um, you know, how do we maintain this in terms of keeping our policies up to date? You know, uh, I'm not making a recommendation tonight. MA- MASC does have a policy service, which we'll have to consider mm-hmm. uh, where they would actually host our policy manual. And in essence, they would push out any changes. I thought uh, we voted for that. Uh, we just voted to do, to use them. Yeah. I don't believe we use, that's a yearly fee to oh, do. Yeah. To, yeah. It's, it's actually, it's a yearly, it's a yearly cost. Yeah. I, thought, uh, I thought that was part of the thing that we said we were going to move to hosting so that it would be I updated. I do not believe we voted that. I can go check. I don't, I, I'll don't. i go back and check. I don't think we voted that. I know we talked about uh, it, but I don't think we voted think to we do it. I think we just voted this phase first, yeah. I think. Right. right. That, that's my recollection as well, but, is that we voted to pay to do mm-hmm. this phase. It wasn't a huge expense to have them, it was like a few hundred dollars, I think, to have mm-hmm. them do it, to host it. So. Yeah. So I'll, I'll eventually bring that back once we approve this. We'll come back. We'll take a look at it uh, and make that. Well, first... See if we did vote it, because then, then if we voted it, that's what it is. Uh, right. And if we if we didn't vote it, then think about uh, recommendation on whether we want to do that in terms of keeping it uh, current. The keeping it current. So so that twenty years from now, there isn't a new group of people sitting here. Uh, I think 
Well, I don't know. We'll see us be here in 20 years. And there won't be a new group of people here sitting here 20 years ago. Anyway, it's like a big red meeting. Hey, they haven't updated that policy manual since 2023, you know, 2053. All right, no, it was was definitely a great exercise. And if any of you noticed that um, MASC just sent out their March newsletter for policy updates. So, um, that's something that I believe that's how that would work is as policies um, change and as they recommend updates, they push that out. Mm-hmm. So if we opt to go with that hosting service, they would notify us on a regular basis so that we could when there's review them, when there's stuff that needs yeah. to be addressed. Yeah. So, um, and, and then I think they actually do. If you say if the school can impose it, then they go in and change it. Yeah, actually. Right. They so actually want, they keep it on their, if they host it. They actually keep yeah. it on their website as well. That would be yeah, nice. And then it links yeah. back to your website. Yeah. And then they actually go in and physically change it. Yep. If you, after the school committee approves, they don't do it without the school committee approval. Right. And then you notify that the school committee has approved the yep. new changes. They would just update it and then share it back to you. Yeah. So it would free up, free up time. Anyway, so thank you very much for that. That's just the first reading. So we won't yeah, no action, any, no action required. No action on that. So that brings us to reports from the school committee at eight twenty nine. Look at us. We're just getting better and better at this. I, I, right? I, I, I swear it's the, it's the meeting frequency. You know, yeah. It allows mm-hmm. us to not have 10, 10.30, 11 o'clock meetings. Not that we don't all love spending time together on a regular basis, but we all do have lives. So does anyone have anything they would like to add or say? Um, I just want to say that I'm super grateful to the teachers for their implementation of the new reading curriculum and the development of lifelong readers like that as an educator myself and as a lifelong reader and lover of literature makes me really excited and happy. Um, So that was I thoroughly enjoyed that presentation hearing about all the hands on learning and the interactive learning that was really exciting for me. And then the other thing is I'm super excited for Thursday and Friday when the elementary school does Aristocats. I've been helping out with rehearsals um, and they are just adorable. It's it's I'm so excited that I got to volunteer and be a part of it because that is my favorite part of being on the school committee is getting to interact with the students. So I'm very excited for that. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? No, I just want to say thank you, Meredith, because that presentation was awesome. It's so nice to see how everything ties in together with my daily life at home and also the school life and being on the school committee. So I appreciate that. And congratulations to all of our athletes and teams. They have done an incredible job this year. We're super proud. I know it, it's a little daunting coming into this room and taking pictures and all the people in here, but I, I definitely want them to know that we are incredibly proud of all of their accomplishments this year. Um, and being part of the youth program, I'm very excited to start working with some of these people um, to build more cohesiveness bet- between our programs. Um, I was actually just meeting with um, Mr. McGinnis earlier tonight about that same topic, so that was good. Um, and I think that's it for me. Okay, great. So we already talked about capital a lot, but um, I'll just take this moment to kind of expand a little bit on the whole bonding concept. Um, You know, going into capital, the pool of funds available for capital was significantly smaller than it has been in prior years. Um, The town budget is level funded. So, you know, in the school budget is level funded. So everything's funded, but there wasn't a lot of excess and not knowing what projects may be coming into town, what new um, influx of tax money. The next several years look like they could be pretty similar. And the downside of that is that, you know, as part of our capital plans, you know, there's um, cycles where we're trying to replace buses every year every other year so that we can keep our fleet current and running we have some really old buses you know for you know um other departments you know police you know they're driving those cars all the time like those cars need to get cycled through and need to get updated they're looking to hire new officers over the next few years they're going to need vehicles so um you know as different things happen you know they're that keeping the capital plan on track is really important because otherwise there's not money to do those things and then those things get aged and you know then we're doubling up bus routes because we have a bus down um so 
to keep the capital plan sort of on track and to not keep, you know, um, Alan Germain likes to say kicking the can and it, it just fits. Um, I don't copy a lot of quotes from Alan, but that's one that fits is, you know, you keep pushing things, well, we'll wait another year, we'll wait another year, but then what happens when there's no more years to wait and there's no money to buy it. So in certain things, it's really important to keep, you know, if you have like a time schedule. And so to keep the capital plan in place, bonding this building in the library does make sense. I would be in support of that because the siding's falling off the side of this building. The longer it takes to get it on, who knows what are the damage. While you're already doing it, do the roof because there's no money to do the roof yet, but that's going to need to be done. And if we can do that, then we can put our capital plan back on track. Actually, bonding that will allow us to reserve like $1.3 million for future capital. So that'll go into already be supporting next year's capital. So next year when the schools have more items that they're going to need to bring forth, you know, things that they need to replace, you know what I mean? There's already a healthy capital budget there um, to help support the next few years. So um, it wasn't part of our vote, so I didn't put it in there. But now that it is part of the overall what I'm learning at the capital outlay committee and the, the town may or may not be in support of taking out a loan, but the rates are really low right now. It's like just over 4%. Um, so it seems to be something that financially would make sense to allow the town to have some access to cash to be able to purchase things next year or in fiscal 26, like looking down the road. Um, and that certainly includes school requests and things that the school's gonna need over the next few years. So that is my little plug. Please come to town meeting and vote. <laughs> One way or the other, right. come and vote, even yeah. if you're not in support of that. But I encourage people to come up because that's the kind of stuff that happens at town meeting and so many people don't realize. And then they like, you know, We'll be like, well, why didn't we have the money to buy this? It's like, oh, well, because you didn't come to town meeting before. Yep. So um, but that's capital outlay has been a really interesting. I'm thankful that you guys voted me onto that subcommittee because I have learned a lot about our whole town and how mm -hmm. it expends things um, and how it all works together. Um, aside from that, you know, we're entering long March. We're like already almost two weeks in. Woo. So, nice. so <laughs> hopefully. March continues to go well. There's lots of exciting performances for drama coming up. I'm really excited for all of them. And um, yeah, so we'll, we don't meet again till April. That feels kind of weird, but <laughs> it's going to be a lot of That's it. Right. Colleen? Um, to further what Kelly was saying with the student athletes talking about programs that are there, they've been developing um, involving younger youth um, development. I know there's a wrestling program and there's also going to be a soccer clinic through um, Carver Rec. And I just think it's important that they do, you know, our student athletes in the middle high school to connect um, and parents connect to build programs with the younger kids so that we can develop sustained skills and, uh, you know, retain our student athletes. Mm -hmm. Sports was always a big deal to me. So, I, you know, it seems like we have incredible athletes and, you know, it makes school fun and, uh, of course, other um, activities are fun too. And um, so that's what struck me tonight. But thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I echo everyone's. Um... Sentiments. So I'm going to do a super quick um, MASC update. I promise it's going to be quick. So um, I am actually going to the NSBA, which is the National School Board Association's um, annual conference in Orlando. And I just so happened to be there at the same time as uh, all the seniors on Grad Bash. Yeah. So um, <laughs> literally going to be in Disney the same day. So it'll be interesting to see if I run into anyone. Um, so I will, um, I'm sure, have lots of um, good bass best practices um, and other connections and things to, to bring back and I'll report back to um, the school committee when I get back. I just think it's really funny. It's the same time. So <laughs> we'll fun. see it. We'll see if I see anyone. Um, so that was going to be quick. Okay. And then next week I'm going to an MASD division three meet and greet, um, putting together a survey for division seven, which is the division that Carver is in. So we're going to um, try to get some feedback from our membership to see um, what issues they're facing and how we can bring some professional development to them to help their um, districts and hopefully have some people that want to share their best practices because shared knowledge is right how we all continue to learn. Um, so you'll all be receiving that as members of um, Division 7. And we're also planning um, 
a DEI training event that's going to be coming in this spring. And then um, May 4th, the registration opened for Day on the Hill. So um, MASC, there's a presentation that's going to be at the UMass Club this year. And then uh, we have lunch at the State House uh, that's prepared by culinary programs in Boston. And um, all the students, everyone's going to be back in person, which is amazing. And then um, at 1 o'clock, we go visit with our legislators. So I have reached out to um, our representatives, our senator, um, and I'm just awaiting confirmation. So hopefully, for who's going to be able to attend that day. Um, but hopefully we will be able to get some face time so we can continue to share the amazing things that are happening in Carver Public Schools. So we did have a student advisory council meeting today and invited the members of the student advisory council. Uh, didn't ask for anybody to commit yet. Yeah. Uh, but I know there was some um, there was some natural conflicts with some games yep. and Absolutely. on that day. And I think I'm going to reach out to uh, student council as well uh, to see who else wants to attend. Uh, we won't put Ash on the spot and ask him. Right. Ask nope, him no question. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we, uh, we're trying to get a group of students to attend as well. That would be awesome. It's always great to um, get students out there, um, get them to, you know, also get some face time with um, hopefully Representative Gifford, maybe Senator Pacheco. So we'll see who's available and um, meet some other MASC folks. And then, you know, of course, students from across the Commonwealth. So, um, Scott, I wonder thing. if, um, in addition to student council, would maybe the civics class be interested in doing the hill? Because that kind of goes along with that as well. I don't know. I'd have to talk to Mr. Trescher of all U.S. History One students. So that would be a big group for us to take. Yeah, that would be a big group. <laughs> maybe, maybe he could do an essay contest. Oh, I shouldn't have said the word essay. No, but maybe they could get, you know, if anybody wanted to volunteer, I don't know that everyone would want to go, but there might be some that yeah. are really passionate about it. Absolutely. That would, I'm sure that could possibly it would be nice to volunteer You know, maybe also. if I, th I would think if you guys could get a group of like four or five students, that would be awesome. Just to, be like great. the really, yeah, I hope, I hope we're going to get four or five students. Yeah. yeah. It would be great. So, anyway. Um, so that is all I have for MASC. I'm super excited for all the amazing events that are coming up and looking forward to um, spring on so many levels. But we'll see what happens over the next couple of days. So I guess everyone should stay um, glued to their phones to see if there are any updates. <laughs> so anyway. Um, I'm hoping for no snow days this year. I don't, I know that yeah, might not be I a know, popular it's, sentiment. It's tough. Unless, but listen, unless, we'll all be unless, really unless, happy unless, in June when we get out yeah, early. Yeah, right? Unless, okay? unless things I change know. drastically in the next couple hours where we have school tomorrow. Yeah. Full, <laughs> we have a full day of school tomorrow. Sorry, guys. No snow days <laughs> right sorry. now, but it'll be amazing in June, guys. <laughs> it, you never know what's going to happen Wednesday night. But we yeah, have school this tomorrow. is true. Could, I mean, even a delay, get to sleep in a little late. <laughs> Delays are okay. Right? Anyway. <laughs> So that is that. So thank you, everyone. Ashton, did you want to yeah. have, make any reports as our student advisory member? You don't have to. But no, there's nothing I can think of. No, okay. okay. Well, we appreciate you being here with us. Yes. Thank you for being here. So with that, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>